Today we are looking at relational data and um, the learning objectives are number one, to recognize the families of verbs for working with relational data. Then the use of keys, um, the primary key, the foreign key, the surrogate key, the use of these keys to identify relations between tables or in um, tidy diverse balance um, data frames. Then three, uh, using um, or the use of mutating joins to combine related you know, tables, and then the use of filters to join or uh, to join uh, use filtering joins rather using filtering joins to remove observations from a table. The fifth one is to recognize common problems with joins. And then the sixth is um, to use set of operations to combine or filter tables. So at the end of um, this chapter, we'll would come back to these objectives and we we'll, um, try to appraise you know, ourselves and see um, what and what have we learned and then what and what can we do you know, as regards you know, the objective and um, what we've learned you know, going through this um, chapter, relational data. Okay, so um, I'll go straight ahead into the introduction. It's rare that um, a data analysis involves only a single data frame. And um, yes, the usual thing is that we have um, different, you know, we have many data frames to deal with. And then we find a way to combine this, you know, or find a way to extract what we need from one data frame into another data frame for you know, several analysis now. Collectively, multiple data frames are referred to as um, relational data because um, there's a relationship between them. Yeah, not just individual data sets you know, that are important. Now, relations are always defined between a pair of data frames. All other relations are built up from this simple idea. The relations of three or more data frames are always a property of relations between you know, each pair. That's, there's a connecting, um, there's an aligning connector between these data frames. And that's why you know, they are relational. That means you can relate one to another. And then because they are relatable, then we can do some other, um, yeah, we can perform some other operations you know, by merging or joining, filtering. And then that could give us, um, yeah, that could give us, bring that could make us to bring in observations not present in one into one based on an aligning, um, based on the common uh, denominator, yes, based on the common denominator. So sometimes both elements of a pair can be the same data frame, yes, it's possible. And um, to work with relational data, we need to understand the verbs as that um, the action words that work with pairs of data frames. So um, here, we need to know the, the families of the verbs, you know, that we have to be dealing with here. And then we have um, major, we have three major families the mutate, the filter, and the set. So these three are you know, the verbs we're working with here. And um, from the objectives, um, especially from objective three, we see mutating joints, we see filtering joints, and then six, we see um, use set operations. So those are the three you know, keywords, the three action words that we need to really you know, understand how they are constructed, how they are being used, and then how, yeah, how they are being used and then I think one other thing I would like to add is um, to remember how to use them when the need arises, because um, it's a lot to take in, but you know, to also remember that, yeah, this is possible in Thai device. I can use this, I have learned about it. So that's another thing, to be able to remember that this is possible and then to be able to apply them when needed. So the common place to find relational data is in a relational database and um, management system. And um, yeah, like every other management system, like SQL or in those old days, access, uh, we have, um, yes, there are ways in which we can relate to data in some of these database systems and then to do some other expressions. Ah, so if so, you should find concepts in this chapter familiar. That's if um, we've, um, we are familiar with some of these databases. But if not, yes, we can still uh, perform you know, our operations here. One of the major terminology you know, difference between database and R is that we generally refer to as data frames in R, while the same concept is referred to as table in databases. So, so in R, we refer to them as data frames. Um, in TDVAS, they even go ahead to call them table, you know, there and there. So hence, we'll see references to one table, two table verbs in dplyr documentation. Okay, so let's just move ahead you now to the uh, prerequisites. We know the prerequisites, the first one is to load the library tidyverse, but because of um, 
the data set we'll be using today, we'll load another package. Um, I think it's, this should be New York flight 13. So we have NYC, maybe New York City, I guess. So NYC flight 13. So um, I would um, load this to library. Okay, now it's because I've installed, um, yeah, I've installed these um, NYC flight 13. So if you want to do this, you have to install this um, library with install.packages and then NYC flight 13. Then we can call in the library when needed. Okay, so we will use the NYC flight package to learn about relational data. NYC flight 13 contains you know, five tables, airplanes, airports, weather, and planes. All these are you know, related to the flight data frame. And um, yeah, to the data frame that we use them in um, in the chapter on data transformation. I can't remember who took us that. Um, I think is, um, I can't remember the name now, who took us that, um, that chapter. So we've, um, yeah, we've used part of this before, but here we are really delving into, into the, um, yeah, into this database. So, um, we have airplanes, we have airports, we have weather, we have planes, all these are related. So let's look at them one after the other. The airplanes, let's look up the full carrier name from its abbreviated code, okay? So airlines rather. So here we have airlines. So we have the carrier 9E, we have the name, is a table, is a six by two table. So we have, um, yeah, 16 rows, two columns. So that's for the um, airlines and then for the airports, for the airports, airports gives information about each airport identified by the FAA airport code. So we have the FAA code, then we have the name of the airport. It's, um, it's a 1458 by eight table. So um, we have FAA, we have the name, we have the latitude and longitude, we have the altitude, we have the Z, then we have um, the DST, maybe destination or distance, I don't know. Then we have the T zone. So um, yeah, so those are the columns. And then for the planes, the planes give information about each plane defined by its tail number, you know, abbreviated as tail num. So this is um, tail num, the year, the year of manufacture, I guess, or I want to believe, the type, the manufacturer, the model, then the engines, the seats, the speed, um, yeah. Then the, uh, we have engines, then we have engine, we have model, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, another um, component, is another table here is uh, weather. Weather gives the weather at each NYC airport for each hour. And then we have origin. Yeah, where I think origin, where the plane is coming from. Year, the month, the day, the hour, the temperature, the dew point, the humidity, then the wind direction, wind speed. We have 15 columns here. We have wind gusts. We have precipitation, pressure, visibility. Then we have time hour, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So one way to show the relationship between the different data frames is with a diagram because um, we've gone through it one after the other now. We might not be able to see the connections between you know, these tables. But here now, this shows us um, like a diagrammatic, um, yeah, visualization to see um, where the connectors are. So for the airports, for the FAA, for the airports, you have FAA. And then for the planes, we have tail number. Now for the flights, we have year, month, day, hour, flight, origin, destination, tail number, carrier. The weather, we have the year, month, day, hour, origin. The airlines, we have carrier names. Now, we have said it now, it looks like it's standing alone. But if you look at the connectors, we see that um, they have um, relations, what you could um, relate each one with. So airports, we can relate you know, origin and destination. That means um, FAA, the, um, yeah, the columns within FAA can relate with origin and destination inside flights, while the tail number in planes can relate to the tail number in flights. So there's that connection. Then the airlines, we have carriers, we have names, and then we also have carriers and flights. So we can relate flights and airlines, you know, using the common denominator, which is a carrier. And then when we come to weather, we have a um, year, month, day, hour origin as the common denominator between weather and them um, and flights. Okay, so 
um, this gives us an impression of um, how we can relate you know, these tables together and then how we can do some further you know, analysis. Now, this diagram is a little bit overwhelming, but it's simple compared to you know, some of those things we'll see you know, in our raw data set. Now, the key to understanding diagrams like this, remember each, relations, each, each relation always concerns a pair of data frames. Now, we don't need to understand the whole thing. All we need to understand is the chain of relationship between these data frames and that which we are interested in. Now, for this um, New York flight 13, flights like I, you know, like I was trying to um, talk about initially, flights connect to planes you know, via a single variable. This is flight. It's connected to planes via a single variable called tail number. Then flights connect you know, to airlines through carrier variable. Then flights connect to airports through origin and destination variables. Then flights connect to weather via origin, year, Monday, hour, uh, you know, like that, like that. Okay, so um, yeah, in this first exercise, um, am I still audible enough? Yes, yeah, I can All hear right. you and see everything. So yeah, so in this first exercise, um, it says, imagine you wanted to draw approximately the route each plane flies from its origin to its destination, okay? What variables would you need? And then what data frames would you combine? So um, I'll just read this. I've already extracted the answer. Okay, so um, drawing the routes requires latitude and longitude, yes, of the origin and destination of the airports of each flight. This requires the flights and airport tables. The flight tables has the origin and the destination airport of each flight. The airport table has the latitude and longitude of each airport. So to get the latitude and longitude of the origin and destination of each flight requires two joints for flights to airport. Now once for the latitude and longitude of the origin airport and once for the latitude and origin of the destination airport. Now here inner join was used to drop any flights with missing airports since they will not have it. Now we'd learn about inner join but um, here, um, the operation has been performed. We'll learn about joints when we get to joints. But um, this is just to show um, relations between um, FAA and then um, flights. Okay, so this is just to show relations between FAA and then and then flights. So um, the plot approximate flight paths for the first um, hundred uh, flights in the flights data set. So this, you no. Know, now, after doing the join, then we do flights lat long, we do a time slice of the first hundred. Then we do the normal GG plots, aesthetics, it carries X and Y. So the X is the origin latitude. The end is the destination latitude. The Y is the origin latitude. The end is the destination latitude. And then um, we add some other constraints, border states, geom segments, you no. Know, then coordinate quick map labs, you no. Know, this are standard um, GJ plots um, add on. So, um, so, but this is what um, that looks like um, airports and flights. And then you can see their destinations of the first 100, first 100 um, flights. Okay, so um, the next one says um, I forgot to draw the relationship between weather and airports. What is the relationship and how should it appear? Um, yeah, so there's a relationship between weather and airports. Uh, it's just um, us linking, um, it's just us linking airports to weather, and then um, yeah, and then we can look at um, the um, the relations within weather and airports. Okay, so um, yeah, weather only contains information for the origin airports. If it contained weather records for all airports in the USA, what additional relation would it define with flights? Now, the answer is that if the weather was included for all airports in the US, then it would provide the weather for the destination of each flight. The weather data frame contains, or weather data frame columns contains year, month, day, hour, origin, and the foreign key would learn about keys you know, subsequently for the flight data from the columns. And this will provide information about the weather at the destination airport at the time of flight takeoff, unless the arrival date time was you no know, was calculated. Now all these are um, available in our um, solutions. There's um, 
have for data science solutions so we can um, just go through some of this while um, I go on to the next um, to the next section. The next section talks about keys. And then here we want to know about primary key. What's the primary key? What is um, a foreign key? And then a surrogate key. Now, the variables used to connect each pair of data frames are called keys. A key is a variable that uniquely now, the emphasis here is on uniquely. So the, the key must be unique. So it must uniquely identify an observation. In simple cases, a single variable is sufficient to identify an observation. For example, each plane is uniquely identified by its tail number or you no know, abbreviated as tail num. In other cases, multiple variables may be needed. For example, to identify an observation in weather, we needed five variables, year, month, day, hour, and origin. So these are you know, keys you know, in um, weather. Now there are two types of keys, primary key, which uniquely identifies an observation in its own data frame. Then foreign key, which uniquely identifies an observation in another data frame, okay? So um, from one data frame, if you are talking about another data frame, so it's going to be a foreign key, but in that data frame, it's going to be a primary key. I think that's the way I could um, explain that. Okay, so a variable can be both a primary key and a foreign key. Yeah, for example, origin is part of the weather primary key. And it's also a foreign key for the airports because you know you can, yeah, for the airports because yes, it's also in the airport table data frame. So once you've identified the primary keys in your data frame, it's good practice to verify that they do indeed uniquely identify each observation. Now, one way to do this is to use the count, you know, the count function, the primary keys, and then to look for entries where n is greater than one. Okay, so let's um, let's look at this um, simple um expression, planes, pipes, count, tail number, filter those greater than one. Then weather, pipes, count year, month, day, hour, origin. All these are you know, inside weather, count all these, and then filter where each of these is greater than one. So we see this. So um, here we have um, zero by two, here we have this. So year, month, day, our origin are all greater than one. So the 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 snag here is that um, since it's greater than one, then it's not unique. So sometimes the data frame doesn't have an explicit primary key. Each row is an observation, but no combination of variables reliably identifies it. So for example, what is the primary key in the flight data frame? You might think it will be the data plus the flight or tail number, but neither of those are unique. And I might think one of the arguments is because um, um, the count is uh, the count here is um, is greater than one. So um, if it has to be a key in explicitly, then it has to be one. So um, that's uh, the argument anyway. So when starting to work with this data, I naively assume that each flight number will be only used once per day. That would mean it's that would make it much easier to communicate problems with a specific flight. Unfortunately, yeah, that is not the case. If a data frame lacks a primary key, it's sometimes useful to add one using mutate or row number. That makes it easier to match observations if you've done some filtering and you want to check back in with the original data. Now, this is called a surrogate key. A primary key and the corresponding foreign key in another data frame form yeah, a relation. Yes, that is um, the common um, yeah the, com yeah, the common um, variable, so to say. Now, relations are typically one to many or one to one or many to many or many to one. For example, in this data, there is um, a many to many relationship between airlines and airports. Each airline flies to many airports. Each airport hosts many airlines. So each airline to many airports is many to many. Each airport take each airport as a variable, hosting many airlines is one to many or many to one. So it depends on how you know, we are looking at you know, some of these um, relationships or some of these relations now. Um, yes, this is um, another exercise. It says add a surrogate key to flights. Um, okay, so we have to look at flights and then 
we are to um, check um, what is in flight and then we should add the surrogate key. And from, let's just see what is in flight. Let's see. Okay, so this is flight. Flight is um, yeah, year, month, day, departure time, schedule time, departure delay, arrival time, scheduled arrival time, arrival delay, distance, hour, minutes, blah, blah, yeah. So we should add a, a, a surrogate key. Now, a surrogate key is a, is a key that is exclusive, that is unique, you know? So if a data frame lacks a primary key, it is sometimes useful to add one with mutate or row number that makes it easier to match observations. If you've done some filtering and you want to check back in with the original data, this is called a surrogate. So that's um, a surrogate key, a key that is um, exclusively unique to, um, to the data. So here we have flights and then we want to add um, a surrogate key. So what was done here is um, to mutate flight, flight ID, you know, that's just like a serial number. There's nothing here showing a serial number and a serial number is exclusively unique to that rule. So um, flights arrange year, month, day, scheduled time, scheduled departure time, carrier flights, piped it with mutate. Mutate is going to add, you know, it's going to perform the operation and then add it to, to, um, to the data frame. So mutate flight ID is equals to rule number, or we can say, okay, if you have, yeah, we can say count. Is equals to row number. So, or he, uh, yes, but I think row number is going to make it serial. So then glimpse to look at, um, you know, how it looks like. So here we have um, year, month, we have everything. Then we have our flight ID here as a serial number, one, two, three. So that is, is exclusive. It's a primary key, but here now it's, um, it's surrogate because it didn't come with, um, the data frame, we have to create it because um, there is no primary key within the data frame. Okay, so, um, okay, any question so far? That sounds good, but that's all making sense. That's kind of um, what I was expecting it to see. So this, it's good, it's ma making sense so far. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so um, we know that some days of the year are special and fewer people than usual fly on them. How might you represent the, that data as a data frame? What would be the primary key of that data frame? And then how would it connect to existing data frame? So, so from here, I'll take us to the, um, the solutions. I think we just check this one alone and then we we'll go to the next section. Then we can always um, check up um, the solutions for other exercises, okay? So um, let me stop sharing and then share the screen for that. Um, the solutions. Okay, I'm coming. Solutions. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. Um, Okay. 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 So, um, oh, yes. Okay. I can remember now. Unfortunately, um, this exercise, I think it's not in there but um yes we can we can discuss it and see um yes what we can do so um we know some of the days of the year are special and then fewer people would um, fly on them so how might we represent the data as a data frame what would be the primary keys of that data frame and uh, how would it connect to the existing data frame any suggestion before I see what comes to my mind. Um, can I call in? Maria Elena, can you make a suggestion? Hi, a uh, suggestion like for solving the exercise, you mean? Because yes. I, well, I'm not sure. Um, I, I don't 
uh, sorry, like today I'm a bit um, okay. like, very concentrated and I, oh. I don't really have any ideas for this. Sorry. All right. All right. No, there's no problem. Um, Shannon, do you have any suggestion? Um, so is there a, if there's a, um, is this some of the days of year are special, special and few, fewer people fly? Yes. Um, does that mean that there's a, a fewer number of flights? Because possibly exactly. you could exactly. filter. Okay. You could filter for a fewer number of flights and then exactly. pull the data out. Exactly. So we can um, say maybe flights um, and less than, um, let's say 50. So, yeah. So we have, um, oh, yeah. So I think the first thing might be to create you know, um, a count for the flights per day. And then say N maybe less than 50 or less than 100. So we have um, flights that are less than 100. And then, um, how, how, yeah, we can represent this uh, with a count. So it's going to be one to 100. And then um, what would be the primary key? So the primary key there will be the count of, you know, the count of fewer flights. And then how are we going to connect it to the data frame? I think we just mutate it like we did for flight ID. We just mutate it back into the um, into the main um, into the main um, into the main um, data frame. Okay, so um, we have um, three and four. We can um, we can look up those in um, the solutions for those are in the um, R for data science solutions. Okay, so um, let's go to the next verb mutating joins, okay? So the first tool we look up, we look at for combining a pair of data frames is the mutating join. Um, we've been using this you know, in some earlier chapters. Uh, a mutating join allows us to combine variables from two data frames. It first matches observations by their keys. Now we know what a key is now. Then copies across variables from one data frame to the other. Like mutate, you know, the function, the join functions add variables to the right. So if you have a lot of variables already, the new variable won't get printed out. Okay, for this, you know, we'll see examples and then we'll see how it's done. Okay, here we have a um, flight to, no, the, yeah, the name of um, um, the, yeah, the name of the function here is flight to. So we are working for on, on flight and then we are selecting um, year, day, hour, origin, destination, tail number, and carrier, and then we want to see it. So this is um, flight two. This is what we are selecting from flights. Flight is, um, I think that's about um, 15 columns. So we are selecting just these eight. So we have these eight. And then remember, okay, okay. When we are in, as you can also use view to, to look at the entire table. Okay. So imagine we want to add the full airline name to flight two data the full airline name. You can combine the airlines and flights to data frame. Now, we remember that um, oh, we can check that in, in flight itself, there is no um, airline name, if I'm not mistaken. So we can check that in flight itself. Uh, there is no airline name. Yeah. So this flight, 19 columns, but this doesn't have airline name. It doesn't. It has carrier, but it doesn't have airline name. But we have airline name in um, airlines. So if we check airlines, um, we check airlines. So we have airline name and we have carrier. Now, it's not, now the, um, the relation is based on carrier because there is carrier in airlines and then there is carrier in um, in flight. So if we join um, these airlines to this, then it, it brings it to the left hand side and then we have the you know, the airline names you know, alongside the carrier. So what is being done here, so imagine you want to add the full airline name to the flight to data. Okay, so you can combine airlines and flight to data frames with a left join. Okay, so how is that done? So we have flights to 
select origin destination, then left join airlines by carrier. So, um, so from flight two, we are selecting origin destination, and then we are joining, you know, left join, left joining um, airlines by carrier. So here now we have. Um, carrier and then we have the names and then yeah we have tail numbers and this and this okay um, something is okay sorry excuse me let's confirm origin destination okay i think adami i think what it's i i would just Realize that there's a little minus sign from the origin yeah. and destination, so oh, it looks like okay. it's selecting everything yeah. except for those columns. Okay, except yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so um, yeah, so it's saying select um every other thing apart from origin and destination, and then left join airlines by carrier. So we have a um, year, month, day, hour, tail number. We have the carrier, and then we have you no know, the name. Okay, so the result of the joining airlines to the flight is an additional variable name, which we don't have before. This is why I call this type of joining a mutating join. In this case, you could have you could have got to the same place using mutate, you know, an R's uh, base subset. And I think we've been doing that, you know, in some previous um, classes. So, okay, um, and that's what was done here. The same um, expression, flight select everything apart from origin and destination. And then um, na mutate name is equals to airline, but here you have to use the dollar sign to pick the name, and then you have to you know then now you have extra expressions match carrier with airlines and carrier, so um, you have um, a longer expression here, but it's going to do basically the same thing, but it's longer. So um, whereas um, I think for parsimony, the first. The former one might be better, okay? But these are to generalize when you need to match multiple variables and um, takes close re reading to figure out the overall effect exactly. So the following sections explain in detail how mutating join, you know, how, how it works. Um, we'll start by letting a useful visual representation of joins and then work with, uh, then we we'll use that to explain four mutating joins function, inner join and um, the other three outer joins. Now, when working with real data, keys don't always uniquely identify observations. So um, we would understand what we can do when we don't have um, unique keys. Now, understanding joins. Um, to help us learn how join works, we are going to use a visual representation. So here we have um, it's table, we have key, we have value called X. On that table, we have key one, two, four. We have value y one, y two, y three. Here we have one, two, three. Okay, so um, so this is what we have here. So we have um, the two table x and y. Now, the colored column. Is not running. Okay. All right. Let's do this. Okay. X, I think that should do Y. Okay, so, so this X, we have the key, we have the values. This is Y, we have the keys, we have uh, the values. Okay, so um, the colored columns represent, okay, so in the expression, the colored columns represent, sorry. Yeah, this is it, yeah. So um, X, one, two, three, Y. So the colored columns represent the key variable that I used to match the rows between the data frames. The gray column represents the value column that is carried along for the right. Okay. So in these examples, um, will be shown how a single variable um, will be shown how a single variable you no know, can be used to um, for joining and then. Um, for multiple keys and multiple values. So a join is a way of connecting each row in X to zero, one or more rows in Y, provided you know, there are um, commonalities. In cases where there are no commonalities, 
there are some other joint operations that we can still perform. The following diagram shows each potential match as an intersection of a pair of lines. Okay, so um, in the first one, we have um, one, two, three as the key. So it's the key we are actually looking at. And then we have one, two, four as um, the other key. So um, yeah, um, in this, in some joints, you can only do um, one and two. In some, you can do one, two, three, four. No, so it depends on um, the type of join and the uh, and what um, you want to what you want to do. So if you look closely, you might notice that you switch the order of the key and the columns in X. This is to emphasize that joins match based on the key. The value you no know, is just there you no know, for the right. Now natural join matches will be indicated with dots. Okay, the number of dots is equal to the number of matches, and that's equal to the number of rows you no know, in the in the output. Okay, so um. Yeah, so we see this now. So here, X1, um, sorry, not X1, the one matches, uh, key one matches key one. Uh, um, key one in X matches key one in Y. So we have, um, yeah, we have X1 for value X, Y1 for value one. So key two matches um, key two in Y. So for key, we have two, then it's, it drags along the values for, for that, for those keys, yeah from the two um, data frame. So it's neglects um, three and four. Yeah, for this for this kind of join. Now we come to inner join. Now the simplest type of join is the inner join. We've seen an expression where inner join was performed. And then an inner join matches pairs of observations whenever their keys are equal. So um, the catch here is um, the keys should be equal. So um yeah it's um kind of similar to um what you no know, we were doing you no know, or what was performed earlier on but the keys are equal so you have um, the you have the join now to be precise this is an inner join or equi join because the keys are matched using the equality operator now since most joins are equi joins we usually drop that specification okay so um using a normal join function and an inner join function as we've seen in these um expressions gives you no know, the the underlying idea is the same thing so um yeah so we can easily use either inner join or join okay so however the okay the outputs of an inner join is a new data frame that contains the key the x values and the y values we shall we use by to tell the dplyr which variable is the key? Okay, so X, no, inner join with Y by the key. Okay, so um, perform that and then we have um, one to X1, Y1, X2, Y2. The most important property of an inner join is that all match rows are not included in the result. This means that generally inner joins are usually not appropriate for using analysis because it's too easy to lose observations. Now, what does an outer join um, do and now is it um, totally different from inner join? An inner join keeps over observations that appear in both data frames, so um, it keeps only the intersections. However, an outer join keeps observations that appear in at least one of the data frames. So there are three types of outer joins. A left join keeps all observations in X, a right join keeps all observations in Y, a full join keeps all observations in X and Y. So um, we have an idea of what you know, this, you know, this is doing. Graphically, it looks like this. So a left join would keep all observations in X, okay? Okay, it keeps all observations in X and then a right join keeps all observations in Y, a full join you know, brings everything, brings everything together. Okay, the most commonly used join in this level is the left join. You use this whenever you look up additional data from another data frame because it preserves the original observations even when there isn't um, a match, okay? So the left join should be your default join. Use it unless you have strong reason to prefer one of the other. So it's, um, it's always, you know, the left join because uh, we are trying to bring in um, something from 
um, another data frame into into um, the main data frame we are working with. So the left join um, um, seems like um, a, a very good um, function. So and um, using like a Venn diagram, this is um, the inner join. This is the left join. And this that's the full join. And then we have the, the right join. However, you know this is not a great representation. It might you know, begin it might begin to question a lot of things. My job our, our memory about which join preserve the observations in which yeah in which data frames, but it suffers from a major limitation. A Venn diagram can't show what happens when keys don't uniquely identify yes an observation. So um, it's when we perform some of these things that we you know we truly understand what's what's been done. Okay, so duplicate keys. Um, so far, all the diagrams have assumed that the keys are unique. But that's not always the case. This section explains what happens when the keys are not unique. There are two possibilities. One data frame has duplicate keys. This is useful when you want to add when you want to add in additional information, and there is typically one to many relationship. And there is a typical. This is always typically one to many relationship. Okay, so this is um duplicate keys. Yeah, from the um, from the name, we know we are going to duplicate you know, whatever it is we have. So for the um, X, we have one two two one for the y we have one two okay so um yeah two is occurring twice in x y it's just occurring once in y so for the final output we are having one two two one yeah so um it's like um, we are duplicating everything you no know, that we have and then you no know, we are making it um um yeah we are combining everything together um however they still um yeah yeah so um it's only it's only one that is unique because yeah we don't even know whether it is um x2 that is the that is unique to the y2 or, although it's likely to be the x that is unique to y2 but it's preserving um x2 x3 and then it's now duplicating it as in y2 y2 um, for the y value, so it's um, it's sort of um, increasing the values of y, uh, uh, and um, yeah, this might be um, okay if uh, unless um, this might actually you know be problematic in some cases. Note that I've um, I've put the key column in a slightly different position in the output. This reflects that the key is a primary key in y, yes, and a foreign key in x oh okay yes exactly okay definitely okay F going by the definition of um keys okay so this is a um, left join what was performed this is the table and this is another table then left join x y by a key and then we have um one two two one and then we have a duplicate in y now both both data frames have duplicate keys. This is usually an error, yes, because in neither data frame do the keys uniquely identify an observation exactly. So when you join duplicate keys, you get all possible com combinations and um, the Cartesian product. So um, uh, yeah, so this is um, another another one. We have one, two, two, three, and here we have one, two, two, three. Okay, so here we have one. So it's it's uh, it's becoming very messy and. Um, uh, it's um, it's going to create you know a much problem. So this is um, the expression. Okay. So um, defining the key, but I wouldn't know when one might need to use this. I I, I don't know if there's any suggestion. I wouldn't know because while I was reading, I was like I, I wouldn't know when one might um, need to use this. Yeah, there might be some instances. I don't know if anybody can give. Um, any um maybe example that can, that comes to mind in real not, in real life i'm not sure i kind of agree with you that seems like it's a really messy a messy kind of table and it, it, it i don't know if i'd want to rely on that because it's creating it seems like it's creating a lot of <laughs> uh, yeah. uh kind of messy data may, that may be unreliable so i'm not sure yeah i i i'm i'm agree with you i don't really know mm -hmm. um I don't know of any examples of that. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, well, with, um, yeah, who knows? We will start on when we have some real data. Okay, so defining the key columns. So far, the pairs of data frames 
I've always been joined. Okay, perfect. I've always been joined by a single variable and that data frame has the same um, name in both data frames, yes. That constraint was included by, by key, yes. So you can use the values for byte to connect to. There's always a connector. So the default by is equals to null. These are all the variables that appear in both data frames, the so-called natural join. So for example, the flight and the weather data frames match on their common variables, year, month, day, hour, and origin. So flight two, left join, weather, should um, give us um, this by 18. And I think it brings in everything because, um, yeah, it brings in everything because nothing was um, specified what it should join by. So it brings in all the variables in both data frame. Okay, so um, a character vector by is equals to X. So this is like a natural join, but uses only some of the common variables. For example, flights and planes, have year variables, but they mean different things, okay? So we only want to join by tail number, exactly. So um, so when we do such, then the two, um, the two key, no, that's not the two keys now. The two um, columns with the same name, would them um, have an appendage? So this is having year.x, meaning it's from a separate table. So this is having year.y, Meaning it's from another another table, so um, they they couldn't join they couldn't left join by year because the year in one means you no know, is representing another thing, and then the year in the in the other table is representing another thing. But the tail number it's um, is the commonality, so that's why you no know, the that is um, being used in that expression. Note that the year variables which appear in both are not constrained to be equal. Yes, okay, so they are disaggregated in the output to the suffix which. I've just said now a new character by vector a is equals to b will carry a dot you no know, in the output. So for example, if you want to draw a map, I mean need to combine the flight data with the airport data, which contains lats and long of each airport. Each flight has an origin and destination. So we need to specify which one we want to join to. Okay, so flights left join airport C destination FAA, flights to left join airport concatenate origin and then origin is equals to FAA. So um to run this we have you no know, these two and then yeah okay so uh which flight has origin so we need to yes so uh, yes yeah, so if we want to plot we need to specify yeah so each flight has an origin and destination airport so we need to specify which one we want to join to so okay so um, um, yeah, left join airports destination is equals to FAA. Then flights to left join airports origin uh, is equals to FAA because no, we have um, um, I think we have um, uh, why are they doing this? Okay, think come we've got that by vector. This will match variable in the x variable is that for example to tell my problems common flights data with airport data. Okay, which contains location of that and longer which airport. Okay. Okay, okay. Each flight has an origin. Okay. So okay. So we need to be specific. All right. Okay. So I think I get what I'm trying to say there now. Okay. So um then we have um series of exercises which says um Compute the, the average delay by destination, then um, join the airport data frame so you can show the spatial distribution. This is um, this. Then to compute the average delay, I think I have it here. Okay. So um, average delays, we have flights grouped by destination. Then we want to summarize delay is equal to um, array. Um, underscore delay that's um, the mean sorry the mean of the um arr underscore delay i've forgotten what this is now underscore delay then um treat uh, remove um not applicable then inner join airports by um destination is equals to faa so um yeah so we can plot it with what uh, was done earlier on. All these were just um, cloned from 
um, the solutions, um, R for data science solutions book. Okay, so add the, add the location of the origin and destination to flights. Okay, I think we've done, um, um, we've said some of these things. Um, we want to add the location of the origin and destination to flights. Okay, so um, airports locations, airports select FAA, lat long, flights select ERD month origin, left join airports by you no know, origin is equal to FAA, left join airports underscore locations by you no know, C destination is equal to FAA. So um, because you have lat long in the two um, data frames, then it's going to be lat.x, long.x, lat.y, long.y. So some of these solutions, all the solutions are actually in the, the solutions to the exercise rather are in the um, R for data science solution. And then here, um, other implementations uh, where they talked about um, uh, the base match and what it does, and then how it's different from um, SQL and um, some terminologies. Then we talked about, yeah, so here now they talked about filtering joints. Um, filtering joints match observations in the same way as mutating joints, but affect the observations, not the variables. So we have um, semi-join, which keeps all observations in X that have a match in Y, or anti-joints, which drops all observations in X and now have a match in Y. So um, yeah, so that's what was explained here. Semi-join and um, anti-join. So graphically, a semi-join looks like this. Okay, there is no observation in Y. It picks only observation in Y that matches X. And then an anti-join, uh, uh, an anti-join does like, um, I think the reverse. An anti-join does the reverse. Okay, so um, the, yeah, the inverse of uh, a semi-join is the anti-join. An anti-join keeps the rules. Okay, sorry, it's um, the inverse. So yeah, not the, uh, not the reverse, yes. So an antigen keeps the rows that doesn't match, that doesn't have a match. So it picks the unique um, rows in the two, uh, in the two data frames. Okay. So uh, yeah. So that's um, that's what um, uh, that's the difference between an antigen and um, a semi-join. And I think yeah, we have exercises, and then we have um, joint problems. So um, then we can, I think yeah, sets of uh, so we can actually. Um, just um, try and go through the remaining sections um, so that we can start a new chapter next week. However, before we um, call it a day, we just look at the learning objectives and we and we try to see if we've um, been able to learn one or two things. We have um, recognized the families of verbs for working with relational data. So we have some of these verbs now. Um, okay, because of time, I wouldn't want to call them. So, so who can tell us some of these verbs Let's so that we know with them. Um, yeah, we've got one or two things. Verbs, relation data. Uh, we we learned, uh, we did mutate, uh, select, yeah, mutate. Yeah. Uh, left join, I think left was one join. of them, just the different right. times and yeah. Exactly, yeah. all right, thank you. So we have um, primary keys to identify relation between tables. We have the primary key, we have the foreign key, we have the surrogate key. So the primary key, we know what the primary key is. It's um, that unique key. In, um, in a particular data frame. Then this foreign key is that um, key in another data frame. Yeah, that it's foreign to a particular uh, data frame. Then the surrogate is because most often than not, you don't have a unique key. So we create you know, a surrogate, which can just be something like a serial number, a row number that is strictly unique you know, to that data frame. Then using mutating joins to combine variables, we've learned how to use join, left join, um, right join, then um, filtering joints, how to filter, you know, to remove observations, yeah. Um, select minus this, minus this, okay. So recognize common problems in joints and then set operations are some of the things we really didn't talk about. So I can just use that up so that um, for next class, um, we can go to the, we can go to chapter 13 and then we'll make some progress. So um, at this point, I would like to say a big thank you to everyone. And um, it's been a ride for about three classes now. And um, yeah, so next week, it's I'm handing over to Sh uh, Shannon, pardon yeah. me. And um, yeah, it's, I, I believe it's going to be fantastic. So do um, have a lovely day and um, yeah, enjoy your weekend. Thank you, Damien. Thank you.